the Red River cart was a large wooden cart that was made all out of um, just wood. So um, if I needed a piece for my wheel, I'd need a tree and a couple of my hand tools. And if I needed a nail, I'd carve a nail and I'd use sinew and rawhide to lash it all together. So it's entirely out of natural materials. Kanase, Kiowa everybody. My name is Pat Callahu. I'm a Métis artist. And today I'm gonna to be talking about and showing you how to carve a little paddle. All right, here we go, everybody. So to carve our paddle today, we're gonna need a little clamp. This one's a three inch clamp and a hand planer. Doesn't matter what size, you can have all little small ones or big ones, they come in all different sizes, whatever one that you have. And then we're gonna need a little paddle blank. So I just cut that out. This particular one, you can use a jigsaw or a scroll saw or a little hand saw. And then we're gonna need a piece of rough sandpaper and a piece of smooth sandpaper. So those are our materials that we're gonna need. And once you have your paddle cut out, we're gonna find a table and clamp it down. And I always like to carve away from me too. So that's one of the tricks. If you carve away from you, then you don't get cut. So once my paddle is carved, is clamped down, you don't wanna clamp it too tight because it'll split the paddle. So you just want it so that your paddle's not moving around on you. And it's good to have a good solid table too, because sometimes they move around. And if you're, you just want your carving tool set so that it just takes little shavings. If it's out too much, it'll be super hard. So you just want to try to get little shavings like this. That's perfect what you want. And it's going to take a while, so it's not going to be super fast. Just like everything, you got to work at it. And if it seems impossible and it's just not working, sometimes your tool's not set right or you're not pushing hard enough. You just wanna take your time because it's easy to get excited when you start getting curls and you just start going. So I'm just trying to do shave it down evenly because this one's going to be a one-sided paddle. And if you wanted to do a two-sided paddle, you just put a line on the, in the middle of the paddle here and then you could flip it over halfway and then you could make it even. But, and this is the same way I carve all my paddles. So whether they're tiny or a great big massive paddle. Fine too. Sometimes, if I turn my tool a little bit on an angle, sometimes it gets a better curl rather than just trying to go straight. So those little tips that can help you make it easier or harder, right? Alrighty. So now, if you can see, I've got it carving down a bit. So it's up to you to how far you go. You can go as skinny as you want. But if you go too skinny, it'll crack really easily. And if you drop it, it'll break and stuff like that. So I like to keep them, um, you know, a little bit like about that, a little bit less. Try to even it out on the tip. And that way when I go to sand it, it's gonna sand down nice and easy. And I just gotta ref over the edges. Okay, I like that. So now I've done this part. I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna do the handle part. So now, especially now, I gotta be careful that I don't go too tight because now is when it's gonna break, especially. Okay, so now here we go. Here's the handle. Okay, a little bit more. So I wanna make sure that I don't take too much out of the middle because I want to see that the handle's carved down and the paddle's carved down. It's going to have a natural shape of a paddle to it. Okay. So now, I've gotten that. So I've got the handles carved down that way. The blades pitched down this way. So now what you want to do is take a sand piece of rough sandpaper and start sanding over the edge and around the outside. 
because that's where it's going to be it'll be sharp around there so you want to make it all nice and smooth so you take your rough sandpaper first i like to use a 60 grit for, for the first one and then like a 120 or something for the the next one a nice piece of smooth finishing paper and paddles don't have to be perfect so i don't try to make them perfect when i draw them out i just draw it out and freehand it and let it be what it wants to be all right so here we are we've got our little mini paddle carved and uh, i'm going to put an infinity on it so i'm just going to freehand one on because that's what i like to do and uh, sometimes it turns out really good and sometimes it doesn't but... the important part is having fun and making something cool that you've never made before yeah so i'm doing infinity because uh, my family are metis and by joining our first nations and european cultures we had endless possibilities we had took the both the best of both the best of both worlds so some people think of it as being halved and some of us think of it as being doubled but the infinity represents the joining of our two cultures okay so now i've got my Infinity just kind of penciled on there roughly. Now I'm going to use a wood burner. So there's all different types of wood burners. I like to use this one because it just heats up the fastest and you can get little different tips for it. It's super cool. It's called a razor tip. You can buy them at Lee Valley. But take your time. These things get really hot too. So if you do buy the good ones and you got them cranked up really high, they can light on fire when you're touching stuff and they can burn your fingertips and so this is a spruce paddle. When you're burning uh, red cedar, it smells amazing. It smells like, uh, a lot of kids say it smells like marshmallows because that's usually the wood that we're roasting. Our mar marshmallows on over the campfire, the cedar here. Okay, so once I burn my infinity on there, or whatever picture I decide to burn, sometimes I'm burning, uh, you know, hummingbirds or boats. Once you got that on there, if there's any pencil marks left over, you want to go back and erase them. And then if you want this paddle to last a really long time, you can find some uh, a type of wipe-on oil, poly oil, or any kind of sealer, and that will seal this from the environment. Because eventually what will happen is they'll dry out and then they'll start splitting just like every piece of wood on earth. So 